Trinity is an alternate format designed to solve a few of the common complaints with modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Namely, a lack of player interaction, as well as stagnant and unbalanced metagame. The format fundamentally alters the game with the addition of a new master rule, but otherwise conforms to the standard TCG rule set. And I think the new summon limit is the perfect place to start when talking about the format. Quote, you cannot normal slash special summon more than three effect monsters each turn. Summoning a normal or non-effect monster in any way does not count towards the summon limit. Flip summoning any monster or setting any monster from hand through use of your normal summon for the turn. Both also do not count towards the summon limit. End quote. This is one of the few times where the somewhat semantic distinction of non-effect monsters is important. This category includes normal monsters as well as ritual and extra deck monsters without effect text. Not to be confused with summoning conditions or material requirements. I think this distinction is so elegant in the way that it opens up a more exotic card pool. This is an instance of a restriction inspiring creativity and unorthodox experimentation. The most obvious play is to summon non-effect extra deck monsters like Gym Knight Pearl or maybe Gaia Force of the Earth, either as big beater monsters or as a stepping stone for synchro and link climbing. Speaking of which, non-effect link monsters in particular gain new utility on top of having useful link arrows. But I think the more interesting application is with cards like Instant Fusion to bring out a non-effect fusion monster, say Cybersaurus, to then be used as Synchro or Xyz material. Or maybe even ritual summoning Hungry Burger to get the search effect of Cyber Angel Benten, without having to increment the summon count for the turn. And since normal monsters are not affected by the summon limit at all, there's actually an incentive to use some of those archetypal vanilla monsters, like Evil Swarm Heliotrope being normal summoned off of a caster. Although, then you cannot make Ophion, as Trinity format has the card banned for game integrity. Which brings me to the second change introduced with Trinity format, an overhaul of the TCG ban list, based on continuous community feedback. I'm not going to go through every minor change in the Forbidden List now, maybe in a History of the Ban List bonus video when I get to that point. But what is really interesting to me is the section of additional banned cards. There is a theme of hitting floodgates like Jaugen the Spiritualist and Jinzo, which is great because that sort of card really puts a damper on player interaction. But then, there are some bans that I feel personally affirmed by, like Exodia and Dice Jar getting forbidden. The intent is to eliminate a lot of the more degenerate cards and alternate win conditions, to streamline the game and distill it down to more skillful play. That briefly addresses the banned cards, but what about limited or semi-limited cards? And this is where the format adds a little complexity in deck building. Most cards are limited by default, which might sound a little extreme at first, however there are a few exceptions. Unbound cards can be run at 3 copies per deck, and several classes of cards are unbound. All non-Pendulum Normal Monsters, which includes tuners like Water Spirit for Halky Fibrax plays, all Normal Pendulum Monsters without Pendulum effects, and all non-effect Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, and Link Monsters. Then there are unbound cards which share a name in the main deck, like Umi and a Legendary Ocean, which actually confused me as a kid. I thought you could effectively run 6 copies of Umi in the main deck, and I did. But thankfully Trinity Format is here to clarify. Last for the unbound card categories are self-referential cards, ones which rely on other copies to be useful, like Bao Baboon. Outside of banned and unbound cards, the list is a little flexible with its own point system, in case you really want to run a second copy of an unlimited card. The minimum deck size for the format is shrunk to 30 cards, which can help to mitigate some of the consistency issues you run into with a singleton format. But you have the option of running up to 60 cards in the main deck. The extra end side decks are unchanged. For every 5 cards you elect to run in the main deck beyond the first 30, you could play an additional copy of an unlimited card. So if you bump your hypothetical Evil Swarm deck up to 40 cards, then you can have a full playset of Evil Swarm Caster to go alongside a playset of Unbound Heliotrope. But then there are two more categories of cards which cannot be run in a 30 card deck. 
A single copy of a one-point card can be run in a 35-card deck, but you cannot run duplicate one-point cards even if you continue to expand your main deck. This also applies to half-point cards, where you can run two individual half-point cards for every additional five main deck cards after the first 30. But again, your final deck can only contain no more than one copy of an individual half or full point card. So expanding the example Evil Swarm deck up to 50 cards, we can run a few more power cards. Let's say a couple half point staples and splurge on a full point card. Those being Dark Hole and BLS at half a point each, then Pot of Greed as our choice for a full point power card. There is a bit of a learning curve in adapting to the changes Trinity format brings. The summon limit helps to decrease complexity, since so much of the advanced format meta revolves around effect monster spam and convoluted combos which test both memory and patience. And the deck building restrictions admittedly do add back a bit of complexity, but they really open the door for player expression. Getting to run more tech cards, which helps to increase deck diversity and makes matches more unique and exciting. Plus you run into interesting deck building moments, where you have to contemplate running one of the worst members of your archetype, splashing in another engine or suite, or even considering running one of those stray normal monsters Konami likes to put into archetypes as filler. To me, the best part of the format is the creativity, but I very much recommend that you explore it for yourself. If you don't want to leave the site, there's the official Trinity YouTube account, as well as the official website. But the best way to interact with the broader community is through the official Discord channel both of which are linked below. But if you are particularly eager for more Trinity format content, might I suggest this video from the official channel.